Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is that you are taking in this April dialogue for the CUNY Black Male Initiative series of the CUNY BMI Dialogues. This month, we have a dynamic panel, as always, but we're featuring a few people from across CUNY BMI uh, allegiances uh, and, and campuses. First, we have our special projects coordinator, Mr. Ron West, who has not only put this panel together, but he's truly the curator of the entire CUNY BMI dialogue series. And today we'll have a conversation that is near and dear to his heart, his career, his passion. Ron West is going to lead us today through our April dialogue. Take it away, Ron. Hi, good morning. Uh, and thank you, Jorge and our panelists. Uh, my name is Ron West, a special projects coordinator for the CUNY Black Male Initiative. And um, we wanted to venture into an area that's so important to a lot of our students, and that is career education, career development, personal development. And with that being the case, uh, the focus is on self-entrepreneurship as a context and as a construct for development. And we're really focusing on the key parts that make this all happen, and that is the purpose, the priority, preparation, and presentation. So I'd like to uh, introduce my co-director on this project. My name is Mrs. Avi Gunn, who's the director of the Queens College Career Center for Engagement and Internships. Ms. Gunn. Thank you, Ron, and thank you for inviting me to the dialogue series. So it's great. I've been working at Queens College for the past five years as the director for the Center for Career Engagement and Internships. My passion is really helping students and alumni find their career pathway. And so today I'm really excited to speak to a CUNY alumni and a CUNY student who is soon to graduate. Um, so an ask them to introduce themselves. If you could tell us a little bit about you personally and professionally, in addition to your value system. And we'll get started. So let's start with Michael Beasley, and then we'll hear from Rihanna Headley. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Beasley. Um, I'm a graduate from Lehman College, class of 2019. I'm currently a quality control technician for the Walt Disney Company, uh, primarily Disney Plus, Disney Streaming. And I am also an independent film uh, director and filmmaker. So that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. I'm producing my own films on my free time and Disney's help paying the bills. So when Ron and I spoke about these dialogue series, we thought of um, self-entrepreneurship, right? And even with career development, like what is your purpose? What is your priority? And how do you prepare? So if you can start with that and let us know, how does that impact who you are? We could start with your purpose, priority, and how have you prepared? Um, well, first off, I would say my purpose is pretty much my passion. I let my um, passion really direct me into like what I really want to do in life. Um, really, I really want to chase you know, being happy with what I'm doing. And when usually I, when I follow what makes me happy, what I'm passionate about, usually the success and opportunities um, come naturally. So usually, you know, I like to, um, I'm in the content creation business. So I love making people feel different things. I love to spread joy, make people laugh and such. So whenever I get the chance to be a part of that, that's usually what I usually uh, jump into. And Overall, it's just um, just the passion of just like spreading um, love and just peace um, and being able to provide for people in different sorts of mediums, whether that be film or written content. Um, that's really like where um, I'm being directed towards. And that's pretty much what led me this whole way. So mm -hmm. tell me, um, as you came into Lehman College and I met you at Lehman College. And for those of you who are watching this, this guy is brilliant. When I met him, he was quiet, didn't say a whole lot, but look at him now. And uh, so what is it about what you're feeling as you look at developing yourself into a prime student 
and now you're out in the real world and you've, got, you've gone through the interview, you've gotten hired by a major company, you're starting to make imprints there, you've got your film company. What is it about the two of them that are similar in terms of how you see them and how you're developing? Right, well, great question. Um, well, both of them just gives me the opportunity to learn and be surrounded by the things that I love. You know, it really started with finding like who I was as an individual and realizing, you know, like before I had to look um, outward, I had to look inward for myself. So when I look inward, I looked, you know, like what type of mediums and content do I like, you know? And then I naturally, um, one hand washes the other. A lot of the stuff that I learned from while working at Disney, I'm watching content almost every single day. And I'm learning from some of the best um, content creators that whether that be directors or writers, and I'm learning and applying it to my own practice with my independent short filmmaking. And usually that helps me, um, you know, like one hand, like uh, one hand washes the other. A lot of my um, independent filmmaking that I did during college helped me get the job at Disney because they saw like I was um, self entrepreneuring, making my own opportunities. And then that's how I really got, helped me get the job with them. That plus um, during my time at Lehman, I was also self teaching myself Korean, which also gave me an extra leg up in terms of the uh, interview process. Cause not too many people at the time when I jumped onto Disney, they didn't know Korean. They didn't have someone who spoke Korean. So that helped me um, get that job and stand out. And it's just, you know, that's why I always like express to people um, try to like find out what you're passionate about. I was passionate about learning Korean, Korean culture. And that was another um, asset I was able to apply to my resume. And that's how, you know, really that back and forth of self improvement really happened. Um, Zavi, I mean, she's right in the middle of everything right now. I'm kind of removed from directing an office, but some things don't change. So. Zavi, how does, um, what do you, a student who's got it kind of like all together like this um, uh, is an example of what it is that becomes competitive. And I know that as directors, we can't promise you a job or an employment, but we can promise you that if you follow certain uh, sequences, you become at least competitive. So Zavi, as a director, what kinds of things do you pass with your students about preparation, and presentation to become competitive. And I think with Michael, um, as you mentioned earlier, he was shy, right? So college is a transformative experience. So we recommend that students get involved in clubs on campus. Clubs might be related to your career, could be related to your interests. It could be related to hobbies. So as Michael mentioned, he was involved in production on campus. So I think that's really important, getting involved with things that you may be interested in. So maybe joining a club if you're an accounting student and just manage that $500 budget to say that you have that finance experience. So involvement is important. And when you're working with, I would say, as a group within an organization, look at how you're utilizing your team building skills. Are you an effective listener? Are you giving other folks the opportunity to share their ideas? So I would recommend communication skills, be an effective communicator. And I think Michael mentioned that he liked writing, right? And he liked creating videos. And so communication is really important across different industries. Some folks may think, oh, if I'm going into finance or business, I don't need to communicate. Yes, you do. You have that spreadsheet with a whole bunch of numbers and you need to be able to articulate in a written report what these numbers mean. So communication skills are also very transformative and I should say not transformative, but transferable skills that you can take from any industry to, to the next. Um, so those are just three things that I could think of that's really important. I find other emerging skills is technology. How can you use technology to make your work more efficient? Um, so one follow-up question I would love to ask um, Michael is using technology, how has that impact like your production work and your content creation work? 
And if you can also just tell us the name of your company that you have. Right, so in terms of the technology, I would say that within my field of film production, um, it is way more advanced than what I would say 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It's way more accessible um, in terms of getting in touch with the equipment and such. There's a lot more resources out there, which is great. Um, I use a lot of um, YouTube. People will be surprised on how um, much YouTube can be a source of information as there are so many other teachers who may not be professors, but they have that hands-on experience where they can provide that certain information on DIY projects, which means do it yourself. And that's really what like really motivated me to um, make my own opportunities instead of waiting for opportunities to come my way. So that's like a really big part of self-entrepreneurship as a whole. And in terms of my own little production um, company, it's the BC Network is a, uh, YouTube channel where I produce and write my own uh, short films and content on there. And usually I, I love uh, networking with people. The majority of the people who are on my short films or other pieces of content are people who are part of my network that I've gained over the years. That includes high school to college and even post-college. So I really stress the network part in my name, the BZ Network, because that's what it really all is. It takes a village to make a production, honestly. It's not a one-man project as some people like to make a scene. You know, there's like 10, 15, 20 people behind the scenes doing different jobs. And if you dare to put on like more than two hats on a certain project, it can be really stressful. So that's uh, my little production company, the BZ Network. You said something, a couple of things that are very, very, very important. Um, I always preach to students the importance of communication, the importance of reading, writing, understanding. How to understand well enough to ask a question that will give you the answer when the answer comes that you understand that that is the answer. You said a couple of very important things. We're in a capitalist system. Sales is the undergird to everything selling, speaking, personality, relationship building. As you ha um, have moved through and, um, and continue to make moves, what advice would you give students about their reading and writing communication skills, how they speak, and the importance of not only customer service, but the importance of being able to be literate in all of this, because every profession has a language. And when you open your doors to become this business, you're, it's just like coming into school and opening your doors to uh, become a good student. How would you say that communication and um, the sales, this understanding of selling is important if you think you're gonna compete as a student and as an entrepreneur? Right, so um, so funny how you mentioned, uh, we're all mentioning the word communications, because um, that was my major in college, media, in media and communications, double minoring in theater and film and television studies. There was a whole bunch. But yeah, we learned on the importance of communication and selling yourself, because selling yourself, like you said, Ron, is really key into taking the next step and each step going forward. I would say that in terms of communication, um, it's always important to, first off, know who you are so you're able to uh, produce yourself correctly and able to amplify your positives. Um, one of the most uh, powerful things that I've learned, I remember it was like my second semester in college, I had a professor named um, James Carney. And he told me, he said that even if you know you guys are just students, always have a business card. And I remember I gave you one of my business cards when I first met you. Yeah. Um, Right, he was saying that even if you guys are students and you don't have the amount of uh, experience as a professor or someone in the industry, it's always, to, it's always important to conduct yourself as a professional. So when I made my business card, I put media specialist because even though I wasn't a graduate then, I was still in that field and I was still passionate about that field. And I knew a thing or two in terms of media. And mm -hmm. 
some of the other stuff that I was interested in, plus my name and email, and I was already selling myself by my second semester of college. So having a business card, I would say, was probably the most uh, productive decisions and uh, enrichment information that was provided to me um, early on in the college uh, experience that I've had. So like I said, yeah, so in terms of like, get to know yourself, get to know who you are, what you want in life. And I will always advocate, have a business card. And when you pass it out, it's a physical piece for people to remember you by. You know, it's so easy for people to get text messages or emails, which can be lost or misread or uh, overlooked. But when you have a piece of a business card, people can find it in their pocket like, oh, I remember I got this from Susie last year. And it's able to like always remind people. And it's, you know, even if it's good loss, it's going to be refound somewhere somehow. So that's my little advice for, for some students. So Zavi, as a director, um, to piggyback on what Mike was saying, to tell me about yourself question like looms over this cloud of our students and, and why should you why should I hire you and as a student why should you hire me so Zavi give us a little bit on how you struggle with that with students right so I think it's important when an employer or if you meet someone at the bus stop or in the grocery market and you're talking to them and it's really about tell me about yourself you look at yourself as a holistic person, right? So you don't just look at yourself as, oh, I'm just a college student or, or I'm just a mom or I'm just this. Just think of yourself holistically, right? What are things that you value as an individual? So I usually tell students what tell me about yourself. If we were to look at a YouTube video, because now they have commercials, I remember when YouTube didn't have commercials, there is like a 10 second pitch or a 15 second pitch about a brand. So you don't have to watch the two minute video. So if you were to take some adjectives and describe yourself in three to five words, what would those words be? And what I've gathered from Michael is that he's creative. He likes to, he's a connector. He likes to connect with people, right? Just in this conversation, that's what I gathered from who he is. So I tell students, think about if they have to describe themselves in three to five words, using descriptive adjectives, big words, not like I'm a helper. You say, I'm an educator, I'm a coach, I'm a mentor, right? Use those strong vocabularies. Those things are really important. And then also ask your family and friends, right? Like say, hey, how would you describe me? What are three to five things that you think I'm, I'm good at or that you would use to describe me? And then on the flip side, you also have to ask for constructive feedback, right? What are some things that you think I can improve on or that I could work on? Because in those areas, when you ask for constructive feedback, then maybe it's learning a second language. Maybe it's learning a technology that can help you do your work more efficiently, something that would usually take someone one hour to do because you're using a particular software like editing this video. It might just take you 20 minutes because you're using that technology and because you ask someone for constructive feedback. So I think just be open. Um, you could have different types of mentors. You can have a faculty member um, as a mentor. You can have a career advisor, an academic advisor, or you could just have someone on the college campus that you have connected with as a mentor. And of course, supervisors, if you have a job, a part-time job or a full-time job, and maybe within your community, right? Maybe within your church, your synagogue, your mosque, you have mentors there. Um, so just think of people around you that you would want to connect with and ask them about their experience and then share yours. And I think it's important for folks to look at creating like a career goal and also creating a career action plan. And trust me, the first plan you try may not work. So you may have to go to plan D or plan Z for it to work, but just being able to be flexible and agile, I think that's important. And that's one thing that I felt like coming out of the pandemic, that's what we've learned is like employers want staff and interns and full-time staff who are agile, are flexible, and being able to show how you've done that would really be important. 
um, uh, Michael, um, my experience has been that students of color, I'm concerned about them. Black students and then students of other colors. I'm concerned because of the image and perception that we can't seem to shake, no matter what we do. Uh, the idea that we are not strategic in our thinking. We like to fantasize a little bit too much. And, and when, the night, when it comes to a conversation that's very qualitative, we don't really understand how to manage the language. Sitting down at a table in a meeting, who am I? How am I gonna do this? What's the plan? I always use professional football as an, and basketball as analogy for planning and decision-making, spontaneous uh, preparation. Watch how games are played, decisions are made based upon whether you're winning or losing, offense and defense. There's no time for long conversations. There's time for, for timeouts and halftime. That to me is like life. And I think you're starting to see your doors are open. Tell me about yourself. Why should I hire you? Metaphorically, those are questions just like if you opened up a store, you know, you're describing the inventory. You're describing what's in my, you're describing my product. Here's what I have in my product line. Tell me about yourself, your qualities. Why should I hire you? Why should I shop there? And, you know, as a student, you know, just let students, how do we let students know how important it is to understand their personal inventory? Because we're in a, a buy sell market, there's no question about this. Black people typically buy, entrepreneurs sell. You sell yourself as a student, you sell yourself as a business person. Give us a little bit on, uh, as a black male, how you start to look at yourself in those contexts about how you sell to, the, to a greater marketplace. Okay, well, in terms of how I sell to a greater marketplace, um, I would definitely, it's like, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, know yourself, you have to know yourself so you're able to know like what to project. You have to know what you want. I remember um, earlier we spoke about having goals and it's important to uh, know your goals. I remember Denzel Washington once said, uh, dreams without goals will just stay as dreams. So it's always important to know what you want, okay? And then when you're able to have the dream, it's important to have goals. That way you can have the stepping stones. And usually it's like, there's a lot of trial and error when it comes to this. The, uh, my mom always stressed to me since I was young, it's always important to try. So even if you don't know yourself necessarily, right? It's always important to try different things. And even when you come to the point of, pitching yourself or pitching your brand or pitching your product, right? The greatest way to learn is to try and to fail. That's how you understand who you are, what is your product, what is your goal? And a lot of the times right there, that's when you learn of like, okay, this is actually what I want. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the uh, stress, I remember like there's a saying in film school, the best film school uh, to be a part of is your own production. And that's where I learned a lot of my um, failures and who I was as a director, who I was as a friend, you know, in terms of like, how can I improve myself? How can I become a better filmmaker? And how can I, you know, just learn from my mistakes because mistakes are uh, normal, mistakes are normal. And I feel like a lot of people, especially uh, men of color are afraid to fail. Cause once you um, give them that idea of self entrepreneurship or a better life that, you know, a better life production and um, all these opportunities. A lot of the times, you know, I've experienced it myself, sometimes things are too good to be true, you know, and you know, they're hesitant to be a part of it and such. And really it's just like, we, we have to break that stigma of that it's not possible when it definitely is. Me, you, and everyone in this conversation is definitely a living testament to that it is definitely possible to go this route. Mm -hmm. Zavi and Michael, there's, um, uh, you know, speaking to students over the years, and I have to speak to a group today at five o'clock. They all, it's a cliche, well, you know, it's not what you know, but who you know. But there's a part that's missing that they, Whenever I ask, they start looking around and try to find out, well, what's that third part? It's not really there. They don't really see it. They're not used to talking about it. Oh, yeah, you know, it's not who you know, but what you know, or what you know, but who you know. 
that's fine. But as we are opening our doors to becoming a better student, getting our internships, competing for internships, which is very, very, you know, cutthroat sometimes. You're out in the business world and Zabi gets students who have high aspirations. But the part that we're not making clear is, it's not who you know, but who knows me? Who knows you? And so as a director and as a, a, a budding entrepreneur, how, the, the who knows me part, how do we communicate that to fellow students and to uh, Zabi, some of your students? So interesting you said that phrase, who knows you? That is a phrase that my career mentor shared with me when I did an internship at York College 20 years ago. Um, the director of the Career mm -hmm. Center, Linda Chesney, that's what she said to me. It's not who you know, but who knows you? Mm -hmm. And the way I define that is when you're not in that classroom, when you're not in that building, when you're not present, who is talking good things about you? So when an employer contacts Ron and I and they say, listen, I need a student for this internship or I need an alum, we could think of Michael. We could think of, yes, this is the student for this particular um, opportunity. So I think it's really key to be able to look at how you present yourself as a, as a person, as an individual, your authentic self, so that when opportunities come up and you're not present, they're thinking of you for that opportunity. And the fact is that looking for a job or an internship it's like 85% networking is how someone finds a job, right? 85% of jobs are found through networking. And that's because that person knows who you are and they're recommending you to a colleague, to a friend, to a business partner, to a financier for, for a particular business. So it's interesting, Ron, that you mentioned that because I know you are at York and that was something my mentor said to me like 20 years ago, and I still um, keep that um, to heart. One other thing I want to mention, and I made some notes here to the initial question that you asked, and I feel, Ron, it's um, folks, individuals need to, no matter what you are, what your ethnicity are, what your race, your gender preference, you need to be able to, as humans, we need to be able to replace fear and anxiety with faith and action. There you go. Yes, there are going to be failures, right? And that's okay. You learn from those failures. But my takeaway to folks is how do you remove that fear and um, replace it with faith? And there are theories out there. So there's a theory called growth mindsets, where it's like, we're always growing, we're always learning. So if you have that growth mindset that you can accomplish something, you will. You might fail 50 times before the 51 time that you accomplish it, but you have to try. And so Ron, when students come and they meet with me and my colleagues, I have that optimistic view. I'm not going to be the pessimist that says, ah, uh, your grades are bad, you can't go to grad school. I'm gonna say, did you do it? Did you have a tutor? <laughs> what can we do to make you improve those grades? What was going on that semester that made you get that low grade? So I'm always an optimist and I feel with the growth mindset, you can grow and accomplish what it is that you need. So I see myself as um, a career coach, as a champion for students, so sometimes, Family members and friends may tell someone, oh, you can't do this. That's too, that's challenging. And I'm like, well, tell me about yourself. What are some of the things that you think you can do in order to accomplish this? What sacrifices you may need to make in order to make this happen for you? So on my desk, I have a plaque and Ron saw it <laughs> recently, which says an optimist sees the glass half full. A pessimist sees it, what, half empty, empty. right? Mm -hmm. So it's that mindset. Well, you know, and, 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 and Michael too, because I think Michael embodies this. Um, I, I used to always, when I'm invited to speak somewhere, I always ask students, what do, you, what do you believe in? What do you trust in? And what do you have faith in? One young lady, I remember she said, you mean God? I said, no. That could be, but faith, trust, and belief. 
uh, Michael, give us a little bit on, on those systems and how they become grounding for you and how it's helped propel you to where you are. So in terms of the faith system, yeah, I can definitely understand like believing in God, but you know, like a lot of people forget to believe in themselves because you know, at the end of the day, I don't mean to get spiritual here, but you know, God does work through you. You know, mm -hmm. I remember Tyler Perry once said, um, uh, faith without action is dead. You Your know, so you can, works. Right. yeah, you know, so it's just like, you can always, you know, I believe, 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 but you, it's, at the end of the day, you also have to put your step forward into making those goals possible, you know? And a lot of the time, like I too had that experience of like not believing in myself, but there comes a time when you um, become sick and tired of being sick and tired and you right. want to change yeah. uh, the road that you're on. And I be eventually became um, that person who I wanted to be uh, when I was younger. I wanted to, to change uh, like my belief system. And there comes this point in time where you'd be like, okay, I understand uh, my life is not going to change unless I change myself, you know? So mm -hmm. I had to look inward and I started to change my habits, my way of thinking. I started calling myself the best in the world every day. Um, just to believe in myself that, you know, it can be possible and just to face adversity head first, you know, not to be scared of adversity, be scared of failure. And honestly, the more you fail, the easier it is to face adversity, speaking from my experience, because a lot of people don't know, like, fine, I got the, the, the Disney job, this Disney job, um, three, about three months after I graduated college. And a lot of people, you know, like, I love, you know, like the response that I got from my friends saying like, oh, it's so great that you got this job and I'm happy for you. But a lot of people don't know, I failed 500 times before I got this job at Disney because I, I um, submitted myself to almost like 500 jobs after uh, college. And that's how intense and competitive the workforce is. You know, so if, if I wasn't getting rejections, it was just going to be ignored. And but, you know, I, I never gave up, which is so important because after, you know, like a few failures, people say like, oh, it's not going to work. I'm just going to give up and such. But at the end of the day, just keep going. Believe in yourself as I did. And eventually, you know, it's going to work out. I'm a living testament to that. So I failed 500 times. And all it takes is that one. Yes to really change the course of your life or career. Zavi, as a, as a leader and as a teacher, as a mentor, Michael, as a student, alum, professional, what's the role of fear in all of this for students? And um, how do students manage fear? Not, fear? not so much fear of failure, but fear of rejection. Oh, I, I'm afraid to talk to this person because I'm afraid to want to interview because um, they start to project. I call it projecting rejection. We hear it all the time. It's a fine line between stepping over in faith and and just instilling fear. How does how does fear come into all of this when you have great grades, uh, uh, Michael and, and Zavi? Student has great grades, but they're fearing taking that next step to to, to communicate with an employer? Yeah, I think talking to other folks, right? So even just talking to professionals, right? In the field that you're interested in, you would learn that most people, the career that they're in, that's not the career they thought about when they were younger, in childhood, or even in college, right? But life is a career path and it's a career journey. So similar to what I said earlier, you have to remove fear with faith and action. And faith is not, faith, I would say, also includes have faith in other people, right? Building other people up around you is also helpful. At Queens College, our motto is we learn so that we may serve. So it doesn't really matter what industry that you're in, always try to be of service to others. So for example, I know Michael, you, you're doing film production, right? I'm sure someone in high school or middle school, they have like their, their YouTube channel and they may wanna get some insight from you like, hey, how do you do that? 
I'll just share my daughter is seven years old and she wants to be a YouTuber. So I'm going to connect her with you. <laughs> Right. So I think it's just like talking to others, learning about their challenges, their accomplishment, just being around other motivated people is going to help you excel and it's going to help you get rid of that fear. So if you have friends and family around you that's put in doubt, let it go in one ear and out the next. You have to be your own champion. And I think when folks realize like you're you find a career that you're passionate about where you're of service to others, it's more beneficial than anything. And I think a lot of times people just think of certain profess certain professions as just like money making, but you have to find out what it is that you're passionate about. And then it's not going to feel like a job. It's not going to feel like oh, I own this business and it's so much work that I'm doing, but you own a business and you're helping your community. How are you giving back to your community? So those are just some of the things that I feel like going back to what we talked about earlier, growth mindset. You may have to get into a positive space. Folks may have to like do different um, meditation just to help them getting that space or seek professional um, advice or counseling if you're in a slump and you can't get out of it, but you really have to be able to be your own advocate as you're moving forward um, within a career. One other thing I, I want to talk about that we really didn't touch on earlier is um, we talked about marketing yourself, right? So to me, it's like your resume, your LinkedIn profile, your social media pages, that is your marketing document and how are you branding it? So Michael, if you can maybe share with us, like, what does your resume look like? What does your social media present? Like what image are you projecting that you want folks to know? Right, so great question. Um, well, usually I would say in my experience, uh, I use, in terms of social media, resume and LinkedIn profiles, I would say, you, one always complements the other, you know, there's always that, uh, like, like a solid mesh or mixing of like, okay, you know, like everything is uh, coherent with each one, everything mixes well, in terms of like the information provided. Um, in terms of my resume, um, I would say, you know, like, I don't know if you want to be like, list some, some stuff I did. I did an internship for BronxNet, which was at Lima College. I was a uh, studio intern, floor manager, camera operation. And usually whatever I did in my resume, I like to also share on my social media profiles as well, mm -hmm. just so I can also you know, I have other friends, even if it's uh, just cordial friends and stuff like that. I know that they, all, they too have jobs and they can be aware of what I'm doing in the professional life as well. And I don't like to, you know, like get like too um, personal with the, uh, uh, Instagram and social media, because I know that too is a marketing uh, tool as well that a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people don't uh, take full advantage of like social media is such a marketing tool that is at your disposal because you have millions of other people who have the same uh, interest as you and can see your profile and see what you're up to and see your own accomplishments. And I've noticed that a lot of the times, whatever I post on Instagram, a lot of people will be put on notice, even if I never worked with them before. Um, recently, I remember I did um, a short film called The Queen of Night and I posted it on uh, my social media profile. And somebody from the other side of the Bronx um, hit me up and they said, oh, next time you do um, a horror film, let me know so I could be your special effects artist. And then eventually I just had that person on to my newest uh, short film, Queen of Night 2, and they knocked it out the box. Mm -hmm. So it's that whole professional into social media uh, networking that really mesh well and really just helps you know, keep the, the gears going in terms and, of that. And, and as we say it, it's relationship building. Yeah. The networking is the process, but the end result and what you want to create are relationships that are strategic, productive, and moving forward. You don't have time to, for, for anything that's going to take you away from moving forward. And the quality of the relationships are really 
bound in a person's integrity and their character. You know, everybody's trying to be somebody. Like the Bible talks about, well, you know, so you can see something and not know it and make it something that's there that's not. But as we move along and, 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 and develop, your career education expands. And that's the language that you're speaking. Your career education is everything that you're gonna learn from now on. You're becoming educated about that. It's like a football player, basketball player learns new plays, how to block out new systems based upon the competition. They're constantly being educated based, based upon the competition. And students, sometimes, and I think Zavi might pitch in with this, sometimes students don't understand how fierce this thing is, how cutthroat the competition is, what people are doing to get position, to get access, to get privilege. So I know we're kind of coming down towards the, the back end of this, but tell me a little bit about habits and discipline. How do you see habits and discipline as being a, uh, a enemy or a, ad, a enemy or a helper, helper for you? Right, so, um... Habits and priorities, um, that's really boils down to like the fundamentals. I remember me and you speaking about that wrong with me and you. Um, not all habits tend to have to be bad, but you know, there is positive habits that you can have at the end of the day. And that really stems towards like your passion and what you're interested in and how motivated you are at the end of the day. So a lot of the times it's just like, if you are if you have a certain habit or interest, you can definitely grow on that and market yourself and become a professional. A lot of people don't understand that. So um, same thing with me, um, back to the whole uh, video production business. It started with me just making um, dub smash lip sync uh, voiceovers in high school. And that was something you know, I saw the response and I enjoyed people laughing and stuff. And I was saying like, hey, this can actually be something um, that I can grow into and become a professional at. And that really like grew into full on short filmmaking and acting on professional productions. So another example would be when I was learning Korean, I really loved uh, uh, K-pop music and then I love uh, K-drama. And that started to become like a healthy habit for me. I was like, okay, um, why don't I just learn Korean? And then that stemmed into another tool that I could learn and build off of. So when it comes to priorities, um, my mom always told me from a young age, I remember her telling me this since I was like, like fourth grade. She used to tell me, do the things you have to do today so you can do the things you want to do tomorrow, which is something that like, I live by every day. I have my priorities straight. Um, it's important for people, um, men, uh, men and women of color, to understand that it's important to not sacrifice a lifelong term of happiness for short-term pleasures. That's pretty much, you know, like in terms of priorities, that's really the key. You have to look at the bigger picture of things, what you want at the end of the day, not just at the end of the hour. So um, that's what I would say about in terms of uh, priorities and healthy habits. So Zavi, tell me about, you know, and... and, and See, Michael represents a very marketable, negotiable uh, uh, product. I mean, I, I, I'm speaking for him all the time. So Zavi, tell me, tell us a little bit about, because you see it every day, what habit or habits do you hear from students that really is standing in their way in terms of their own progress? Procrastination. And I think we all have a little bit of procrastination in us, right? So to Michael's point, it would be like, what are you procrastinating about? Just get it done, <laughs> right? Like have, if you need to have a vision board or you need to have your phone remind you to particularly do a task to get it done, that's what you need to really do. One thing that I recommend um, that college students do before graduation is really having like three internships or three volunteer experience or three um, field work experience in the field that you think you wanna go into. Because sometimes when people graduate and they start working in a profession, they realize they hate it. And the reason they hate it is because while they're in college, 
they were never put in that environment to work. So I recommend three is my magic number, at least three, right? And you wanna try it in different areas. So then you figure out what it is that you would be um, interested in. So I think internships are the key from my personal experience. When I was in college, I studied communications similar to Michael and Ron, I know you have your expertise within the communication industry. In college, I wanted to be a journalist. And then of course, as I looked at career progression, I also wanted to be like a political correspondent so I could travel the world and then eventually be an anchor person. But while I was in college, I started researching more like what's involved in this career. And I even did broadcasting for a little bit. I looked into that and I realized, you know what, it's not for me. But that was because I had the college experience to kind of test these things out, do my research, be a part of like a radio club and realize, nope, that's not for me. So this is really, I think some of the barriers is for folks not taking risks. And to me, it's like, take a risk while you're in college. And even when you graduate, a lot of times you also have to take a risk and see where it takes you. And I always say, if it works out successfully, then the path is open. If it's not successful, then maybe you go through the window or you, or you go through the roof, you find a different way to get in. But you have to be able to be determined to like overcome some of those um, challenges. And so for me personally, when I was in college, I did an internship at York College when I was pursuing my master's in the counseling center. And what I really found that I really liked as part of the counseling center was career development. So the next semester, I did an internship at the career center. And this is where I found my passion to really do career development. But in hindsight, I realized I was always giving my friends advice like, yeah, you need to do an internship, come volunteer with me here, join this particular club. So when you reflect on your experience, you see that was um, always there. So my advice to students is look at what are some of the things that you have as a hobby? Can you turn that hobby into career or can you keep it as a hobby? which is fine because you have to look at yourself um, holistically. Five words, well, well taken. Uh, Michael, um, as a black male, what is the, what is, what is your, in your opinion, what's the outlook for black males in terms of their marketability? And I don't want to make this too broad of a question, but you, you have a certain, a certain circle of, of, of friends and like thinkers. Do you guys talk about what's coming for black males that are really qualified to, to be employed but can't find work? Do you talk about that at all? And, what, and what, what, do you, what do you say about that when you guys are talking? So in terms of black males, um, in terms of marketing and finding opportunities for ourselves, um, I would say that it has come across in a few of the conversations that I've had with uh, certain of my colleagues or uh, friends from college and such. Um, I would say that um, a lot of the times, like it, it, it definitely is a question that is brought up. And a lot of the times what boils down after, you know, a little bit of back and forth and a little bit of just venting the frustrations that we may have. I've noticed that a lot of the times it's just like, we, the answer can be right there in front of you, which is strangely enough. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's just me being an optimist, but a lot of the times where I realized it was just like, just like uh, black male initiative itself, it's a collection of black men and women who are in the same boat, yet we are trying to work towards the same goal of self-improvement and, uh, providing knowledge towards one another. So a lot of the times, like when we want something, we, be, we are so um, surprised that the answer can be held with the next person, you know, mm -hmm. whether that be an opportunity, a job opportunity, some knowledge or resource and such. 
And that's something that I definitely recommend for people to understand and to try is that a lot of the times like businesses start with one person and that one person starts with the network that they met in college. It could be a next door neighbor, you know? So if you have an idea and if you're a great leader at heart, you're able to branch off and to do what you want to do because the next person might have the same goal. Maybe the next person is looking for a leader, you know? So a lot of the times it's just like, hey, just like it's time to be a leader um, and lead yourself and lead other people towards. And that village that you will create through the networking process of marketing, um, you can have yourself a business, you can have yourself uh, at least a program, a group of people to give birth to whatever idea uh, that you have. Um, and in terms of marketing, as a whole, I would say that a lot of it has to boil down to um, how you hold yourself as an individual, which has been like a reoccurring question or mm -hmm. a topic that has been mm -hmm. brought up in this conversation, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it, you know, like I always tell people, it's just like, don't call yourself um, an aspiring engineer. Tell yourself you're an engineer. Because the more you tell yourself on that you are an engineer, that you are an actor, that you are a businessman or a businesswoman and such, you start to, you know, like um, unconsciously change your habits, right. change your outlook on life. And you start to like make the right moves in terms of like what you want out of it. So right. yeah, that's what I would have to say about that. So Zavi, um, as, a, as a director, um, what has been, in your experience, the most frustrating uh, uh, place that our students seem to express when they just cannot find work? What do you tell them? Yes, yeah, so I'm the optimist. Let them know the job market is good, <laughs> right? There are, if you look at the unemployment rate for um, for New York, I believe it's like maybe 3.5%, right? So there are job opportunities out there. So when you listen to the media and the media is like, oh, these big firms are laying off people. Okay, well, the small firms, the mom and pop, the entrepreneurs, the nonprofits, they're struggling to hire people. So don't just only look at the big firms, right? Look at some of the local businesses within your community where you can work because they need to hire folks. So I feel like that's really key for folks to know like there are jobs and the economy is cyclical. We go into a recession, we come out of recession, there are still job opportunities. You just need to figure out where to look. And that's where your network is important. As a college student, you have an alumni network, a vast alumni network. Check in with your career center. Be a part of the alumni association. So we're CUNY. There's a CUNY alumni association. And for the different colleges, be a part of those events. Go to those networking events so that you could connect with folks about career opportunities. Tap into your professors that you had undergrad or that you had a semester ago, just to say, hey, this is what I'm up to. This is what I'm thinking about. Would you have the opportunity to actually talk and meet with me? And I feel like when you're building your professional network, you don't only need a mentor, but you need a sponsor. And what a sponsor is, is someone who can help you move up within your career pathway because they're in a position of authority to like hire. And they're also in a position of authority to connect you to folks in other areas that they can refer you to employment opportunities or even just networking opportunities to even grow your business. So part of your network, you want a network around you that's smarter than you, someone that you can trust, and someone that's going to be candid. They're, gonna, they're not always gonna be a yes person. They're not always gonna be a cheerleader. They're gonna tell you the truth. And then you either take the information and change it or you respectfully disagree. But I feel like there are challenges out there. And when challenges come to you, you can't take it personal, right? You don't know what other people are going through and why they treat you a certain way. You could only assume 
And unless they come out blatantly and say, I don't like you because of X, Y, and Z, I am not in my mind gonna try to figure out what your problem is with me. I just know I don't have a problem with you. I'm going to keep it professional and I need to accomplish X, Y, and Z. And this is how we could collaborate in a cordial manner, in a respectful manner. So I think that is going back to mindset. When things come up, how do you respond to it? Do you instinctively respond to like, oh, I'm gonna be mad at this person or you're gonna sit back, listen, and okay, I'll respond to that email or I'll respond to that message tomorrow in a more professional manner. So that's what I would recommend. And something that I forgot to say earlier, in regards to internships, I recommend that college students start looking at internship during your first year of college. So by the time you graduate, you would either have an internship, you could have volunteered a significant amount of hours, at least 100 hours, or had some sort of field work experience. But that's what's gonna build value to your resume. That's gonna build up your experience and your skills. So I know within the academic curriculum, it may say you don't need to do um, an internship or a capstone until senior year. As a career professional, Ron oh, and I are saying, do it as early as possible. So from my personal experience in high school, I'm gonna give a shout out to Richmond Hill High School in Queens and my guidance counselor. I did an internship at King Manor Museum on the weekends paid internship above minimum wage. So if you're a high school student and you want to start volunteering and working in different fields, you can start as early as high school. I would even say middle school, <laughs> but that's what I recommend. It's like, you have to put yourself in other environments to figure out if you like that pathway, that career pathway. Great. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Savi, for that amazing uh, just plethora of information. Ron, thank you so much for leading this. This is great. Um, we were we were hoping to have another student and, you know, technical difficulties, Mercury and retrograde, whatever have you uh, <laughs> made it made it uh, difficult. Um, but thank you all for the information. Michael, great pieces of information. This again, as Ron said, will be the first of a series of um, dialogues that will truly just touch on how students can prepare themselves for career, for self-entrepreneurship, for just marketing themselves. I think there's a lot of information here that we can start with. Um, we're going to close out, but as we always do, we want to give people who are watching the opportunity to contact you and you know pick your brains and maybe you all could be the the conduit to which the student can uh, go and touch uh, other mentors or as I was just introduced thank you so much for that Savi a sponsor into you know career growth so um, tell us uh, what's the best way or or uh, the best way for people to contact you or if you have some projects that that are coming up that you want people to be in touch with um just let us know your your email that uh, you would like to share and social media so we'll start with michael right so um you can watch my short films on youtube under the youtube channel the beasley network um i have two short films uh that was already produced the queen of night and holding on both of them are award-winning short films in the film festival circuit um, I just finished wrapped up uh, Queen of Night 2, the sequel, um, and that should be coming out in October. So subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can see that that will be coming out soon. It's going to be, it's pretty much the biggest project I've ever made so far. Um, and thank you. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram, B underscore E A S Y 31, B underscore easy 31, um, B easy. 31. And um, yeah, you can reach out to me um, there if you ever want to network or collaborate on a project or even just um, have any questions in terms of self entrepreneurship or you just need a mentor for college. Okay. Well, Michael, give us that again a little slower. Give us that again where we can reach you at your um, Instagram and, and then YouTube. Right. Okay. Sorry. So for my YouTube, it's the Beasley, like my last name. 
Network. That's my YouTube channel name. And on Instagram, it's B, like in Bob, underscore E A S Y 31. Um, I could put it in the chat if you want to. But um, yeah, so that's where you can reach me at if you ever have any questions or if you just want to collab. Thank so, you for that. This will also be on the notes under the YouTube uh, channel. So people will have access to that there. Uh, Ron, go ahead. No, I was going to say thank you to, um, to everyone. I think we're beginning to have the kind of conversations that need to be had. They haven't been had and they should have been had. So we're going to move forward under BMI at breaking new ground. So this is part of it. And I want to thank Zavi. She's become like a, a sidekick at this point, man, because I can't do anything without her. And Michael, you know, you just, we met when, when you were like a little quiet guy with not much to say, but you know, here you go. And so I want to thank both of you for um, making this. And also, and, and Jorge as always, because he's a co-pilot, he's a technical co-pilot. So without him, you know, we're, we're not here, but thank you so much to the community BMI to uh, let us produce these um, discussions. Great, thank you so much for that, Ron. And Zavi, any plugins you have for your yourself or your office? So I'll plug in as Ron's sidekick that the BMI conference is having a career fair Friday, October 6th, 2023. So that's Friday, October 6th, 2023. It's going to be at Queens College campus and it's in the afternoon from two to four in the student union. So make sure you go to the BMI conference website to register to attend as a CUNY student or a CUNY alum, it's going to be amazing. So Ron and I are working on some top employers to come to that event to recruit the talented CUNY students. And to connect with me professionally, LinkedIn. So my name is unique enough, Zavi Gunn. <laughs> and I also put it in the chat, so it'll be in the notes, but Zavi Gunn, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And when you go to like events, um, LinkedIn has like an amazing app. Once you have a profile, someone just takes their phone, they scan a picture, and then you're connected with them in LinkedIn. So this is how like I could keep track of my students. Like, so for example, Rihanna, I keep track with what she's doing because she's always upload, updating her LinkedIn. And I'm like, oh, congrats, great work. So if you want your network to know what you're doing, connect with them on LinkedIn and make sure you update it ever so often. Um, so that's what I would recommend to stay engaged with me is professionally on LinkedIn. Great. Thank you so much. And as a message to everybody watching, especially if you're a student, if you're a college student, make sure you are visiting your career and internship office, career development. Each campus kind of calls it a little bit different. Um, I, I used to work at Queens College and I used to be an advisor and that was kind of like my message all the time. And they always used to tell me, but they're busy. I'm like, yes. But when you go to a restaurant and the wait staff is busy, right. you just <laughs> not ask them to bring you your food. No, you go and you and you ask for what you need. Right. So make sure you are connecting with your career development office. And with that, we want to bid you adieu. Have a good one until the next time. Thank you.